Good morning. And welcome to the spring 2023 commencement of the University of Houston Victoria College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences and College of Natural and Applied Sciences. My name is Brian Gibbs, and it is my great honor to open this ceremony with the singing of the National Anthem. Before we get started today, I would like to ask all of you to please silence your cell phones and other electronic devices. Please stand for the singing of the National Anthem. After the anthem, please remain standing for a moment of reflection led by the U of H, UHV Student Government Association President, Ms. Kai Martinez. Jaguars. First, I would like to congratulate you all on reaching this important achievement. It's been quite a journey. I want to applaud you all for persevering and completing your degrees despite the struggles of the pandemic and all other difficulties each of you have faced. Each of you have proved that we as Jaguars are truly exceptional. Now, as we prepare for the future and the journey ahead of each of us, Let's take a moment to reflect on the steps that brought us here. Think back on your journey, but don't look back with regret at your struggles. Look back and know that you have come through and moved beyond to something better. Look back and remember all the people who have supported you and encouraged you on your journey. Please join me in this moment of reflection. Thank you, please be seated. Good morning. I am Bob Glenn and it's my honor and privilege to be the president of the University of Houston Victoria and be the first to welcome you here I'm going to uh, be giving some remarks in a few minutes, but I first would like to acknowledge some important individuals who are here with us today. Joining us in our ceremony are individuals who have supported UHB throughout the years. I'd like to start by acknowledging some representatives from the President's Regional Advisory Board. This board is a group of outstanding citizens who offer the university administration wise and timely advice on many issues. I would ask them to stand as I call out their names. Gary Braz, Dr. Tina Harrington, Diane Kleem, and Deborah Williams. Could we have a round of applause for these members? We also have seated here behind me members of the Executive Committee of the University. And again, I would ask them to stand as I call out their names. 
First, the Chief Academic Officer of the University, the Provost, Dr. Char Chance Glenn, Dr. Jay Lambert, Vice President for Student Affairs, Dr. Beverly Shuford, Vice President for Finance and Administration, Amber Countess, the Vice President for University Advancement, and Dr. Carla DeCure, the Interim Vice President for Enrollment Management. Could we have a round of acknowledgement for these folks? Also, I want to acknowledge Fee Villa, the fiance of our alumni speaker, Robert Royer. Would you please stand to be recognized? <laughs> Students are the lifeblood of any university, but the heart that beats that blood is the university's faculty, many of whom are here today. You've already seen a faculty representative, and that was our Grand Marshal, Dr. Sandy Veneman, President of the Faculty Senate and Professor of Psychology in the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences, as well as Biology in the College of Natural and Applied Science. The Grand Marshal plays an important role in today's ceremony. Please join me in greeting Dr. Veneman, and I'd ask all faculty members now to stand so that the students have a chance to express their appreciation for you. Thank you. Now there's good news and bad news about today's commencement address. The bad news is I'm your speaker. <laughs> Try not to be disappointed. The good news is that I know you didn't come here to hear me speak. So I will tell you in the same way that Zsa Zsa Gabor once famously told husband number six out of the total of nine that she married, don't worry, I won't keep you long. I've attended, by my count, more than 100 commencement ceremonies over my uh, years in higher education. It is, in my opinion, the best thing we do as a university, and it is the best thing about being a university president. I genuinely believe higher education changes lives. I've seen it over and over again. No matter how long it lasts, no matter how many hands I shake, no matter how many times I smile for the camera, when I leave, I feel refreshed to my core because this is the essence of what we all came here for to begin with. And it's always a delight when I have a chance to interact with an alum in the years to, that pass and we have a chance to reminisce about their commencement. If I ask them, to tell me what they remember, they all remember what they felt and how they were feeling. They remember who was there to support them. But sadly, 98% of them have no idea who their commencement speaker was or what was said. I can remember my own commencement. When I received my doctorate at the University of Alabama, Harper Lee was the commencement speaker. That's right, Harper Lee of To Kill a Mockingbird, Fred. I saw her, and I am certain that I am a better person because I heard her inspirational words. I heard every word that came out of her mouth. Which precise words came out of her mouth, I have no idea. <laughs> so that's the dilemma of a commencement speaker. So my way to solve that is I'm just going to focus on reminding you of just two or three things that you already know. But now when we meet in years to come and I ask you about those things and you remember them because you already knew them, at that point I will take credit for inspiring you. <laughs> remember that we started with the moment of reflection. I'd like to define being present right now because I want you to be present right here. And we define being present as being here in the moment being aware of where you are and who is with you. To be aware of all who are here, to hear your name called so that you can walk across this stage and say, I'm present, I'm here. So here's the first thing you already know. You didn't get here by yourself. You are here with your people. 
I will go one step further and say you are here because of your people. There may well be a few among you who accomplished this goal all on your own, but for the vast majority of you, you had help. You had people who supported you, nurtured you, cheered you, who did all kinds of things to help you keep going. Nothing of value and lasting worth is ever accomplished in a vacuum. As American author and poet Albert Pike said, what we have done for ourselves alone dies with us. But what we have done for others in the world remains and is immortal. All great achievements are accomplished with the help of others. So don't leave here today without saying thank you. It is the mark of an educated person to understand the value of being thankful and of saying thank you. So before you leave here today, put your arms around your people and say thank you. Now I'm serious, if I find out you didn't, I will come for you. <laughs> Take that degree right back, I can still do that. The next thing that you already know is that today is a big deal and so are you. We'll start with the ceremony. There's a reason that we all dress up in robes and go through all of this pomp and circumstance. The history of commencement goes back over a thousand years to what we call the Dark Ages. At that time, it was believed that each person was placed on earth by God for specific reasons. Kings were kings because of divine right. They were chosen by God to rule. Wherever you were born, whatever station of life you found yourself in, that was where you were meant to be and meant to stay. Almost no one could read. Books were exceedingly rare and only existed in private libraries and monasteries. You couldn't go to a private library because only someone of noble birth could have access to those books. But you could go to a monastery and you could learn to read and you could have books to read. But to do so, you had to join the monastery. You had to become a part of the monastic order. When you join the order, you put on the robe, which was a signal to everyone that you met of who you were and what role you served in life. It was a life-changing event. It was meant to signify that you had chosen a path for your life and a path for your service. Today's ceremony is intended to be a reflection of that tradition. The faculty wear robes that have come to mean that they selected teaching as their vocation and as their service to others. You are donning robes that are intended to reflect that you are now a new person. Granted, you may well have come here with a pretty clear idea of what you wanted to do in life, but you didn't have everything you needed to go down the path you have chosen. My hope is that we aided you in gaining the insights, skills, and knowledge that you have um, to be fully engaged in the path you have chosen. I often say that a great university is one that can take a student from wherever they are to wherever they need to be. My greatest hope is that we have done that for you. We got you to where you need to be. This ceremony is intended to be a celebration of you being on the cusp of your future, the future you see for yourself. That brings us back around to the fact that you're a pretty big deal, especially today. You stand here today on the cusp of doing what comes next. That is part of the reason today's ceremony is called commencement and not conclusion. You are starting the next chapter and you most certainly are not done. We are proud of you and what you have done. This room is filled with people who are proud of you but you're not done. You are starting. The race is yet to come. It's not over. And from here on in, people will continue to be watching what you do, and UHV will be watching because you will be a living and breathing example of what a student who is willing to come here and work hard can do. We are proud, but we expect to be prouder yet. At this point, I want to share the one thing that you may not already know. 
but which I believe to be a law of human nature. It was a concept that was first outlined by Viktor Frankl in his book, Man's Search for Meaning. Frankl was a psychiatrist in Germany at the outbreak of World War II. He was Jewish. He ended up in a concentration camp for much of the war. While he was there, he watched as his fellow prisoners struggled with their situation. He saw that some of them came to believe that they were doomed, so they gave up, and they simply waited for death. A smaller number of prisoners did not get up, and even if they perished, they died on their own terms. He subsequently developed a school of psychotherapy known as logotherapy. The key concept of that therapy is this. Everything can be taken from a person but one thing, the last of the human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. In my own training and experience in the field of counseling, I've seen hundreds of examples that demonstrate the truth of this statement, and I'm sure you have too. People with severe handicaps who made the decision not to let that handicap define them. People who were treated cruelly and yet still decided to react with kindness. People whose creations were rejected over and over again, who chose not to be discouraged and to persevere until they found the success that they sought. Because you are standing on the cusp of your future, I encourage you to remember that you alone will choose how you will react to what happens to you. You alone will be responsible for the choices that you will make. You're about to go out and make your way in a world that can be accurately described as contentious and divisive. I want to be clear that I don't care whether your politics are red or blue. The simple truth is that there are bad ideas at both extremes. And sadly, both ends of the spectrum spend most of their time engaged in name calling and blaming. And it will be demanded of you that you choose one side or the other or else. I would encourage you to remember Frankel's words as you make your choices. You have the right to choose your own direction. I encourage you to consider the choice of standing in the middle as you deal with either side and to look for those things that unite us rather than concentrating on that which divides us. This is not the first time in our history that we have faced divisions that threaten to break us apart. But our history has shown that even in the worst of those times, when enough people chose to stand in the middle and reach out to both sides, we have survived the threat of division. The trick, it seems to me, is to learn how to disagree with an idea while still valuing the person standing in front of you. It really is possible to reject ideas without rejecting people. It is hard, but it is worth the effort. You are now entitled to think of yourself as an educated person, but it requires more than just making the claim. You can claim to be a good swimmer, but it is only when you get thrown into the deep end of the pool that we can see objectively if that claim is true or not. An educated person has obtained certain abilities. One of those abilities is the ability to hold conflicting ideas in their head simultaneously. Another is the ability to allow someone to hold their own view without being threatened by that notion. And there is the ability to treat all persons with civility and respect, even when they don't accept your views. But the key ability, in my view, is the ability to reach a compromise that allows you and the person you disagree with to both move forward with your heads up. One of the things that makes our country so great is that we have found ways to do this in the past. We are clearly having troubles now but the future has not yet been written. So one final reminder, you are the future. You have the freedom to make your own choices. I argue again that an educated person goes to the middle and reaches out in both directions. 
I encourage you to consider your choices wisely. All right, I'm going to step down off the soapbox now. Quick recap. Today, big deal. <laughs> you, big deal. All these people here for you, a very big deal. The future ahead, the horizon wide open. You have choices to make. Good luck and Godspeed. Now I'd like to welcome up the provost, Dr. Chance Glenn who will introduce this year's honors recipients, and then we will get to the part that you came here for. Thank you, President Glenn. Um, I would first direct your attention to page eight in your program to view the list of those faculty recognized by their students and their peers for excellence in teaching, research, and service. They are Jacob Snyder, Hardik Gohill, and Umberto Hernandez. All three of them are here today, and I would ask them to stand. They should be commended for their work and their difference that they make at the university and in our students' lives. I would also like to recognize the outstanding students for spring 2023 selected by the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences and the College of Natural and Applied Science. These students were chosen based on their academic records and related achievements. If the students are here, would you please stand? The outstanding students for the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences are Jefferson Weber, outstanding graduate student, and Selena Vidhammer, outstanding undergraduate student. Thank you. The outstanding students for the College of Natural and Applied Science are Naomi Bustamante, outstanding graduate student, and Alexandra Paulson, outstanding undergraduate student. UHV definitely has outstanding students, but those graduating with honors have shown special dedication to their studies. These undergraduate candidates are wearing gold braids over their robes, and their names are listed in your program. I'm pleased to recognize them today. Candidates graduating cum laude with honor having grade board averages of 3.5 to 3.67 on a four-point scale. Would those graduating cum laude please stand and be recognized? Thank you, thank you. Those undergraduates gra graduating magna cum laude with high honor have GPAs of 3.67 to 3.84. Please stand so we may recognize you at this time. You may be seated. And finally, those graduating summa cum laude with highest honor have a 3.85 GPA or higher. Congratulations on this outstanding achievement. Please stand that we may honor you at this time. Congratulations, congratulations all. Next, I would call your attention to student members of academic honor societies and the UHV honors program. 
These students are wearing cords or stoles to indicate membership in these societies, which are listed in page seven of your program. Graduates of the honors program completed an extensive curriculum supplementing their normal academic work while maintaining a high GPA. They're wearing gold medallions designating their achievement. Would all the student members of these honor societies and honors program please stand and be recognized? All right. Please be seated. You may also have noticed graduates wearing red, white, and blue intertwined graduation cords. We call these our Patriot cords. These individuals are wearing Patriot cord uh, because they are veterans and active service members of the U.S. Armed Forces. At this time, we ask that all graduating veterans and active service members, as well as any others in the building, please stand and be recognized. UHV thanks you for your and salutes you for our service to our country. We also have with us graduating international students who are proudly wearing a sash representing their countries of citizenship. International students are those enrolled at UHV on an F and J student visa status, and we are honored to have them with us as graduates. Please stand and be recognized. In addition, we have some special graduates who are wearing Jaguar Spirit Cords. These generous students are participating in our Jags Give Back program, and we appreciate their support of UHV. Please stand and be recognized. Thank you. Thank you. If you notice students with teal cords, these are our first-gen graduation cords, which denote students who are the first generation in their family to complete a four-year degree. Please join me in honoring these students who chose to take a new step and change their future by earning a degree. Please stand. Congratulations, congratulations. <laughs> and now, the candidates for degrees will be presented. Candidates for the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences will be presented by the college's dean, Dr. Kyoko Amano. Candidates for the College of Natural and Applied Science will be presented by the interim dean, Dr. Dmitry Sobolev. So, um, with the candidates for Bachelor of Applied Arts and Sciences, Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, Master of Arts, Master of Arts in Interdisciplinary Studies, Master of Fine Arts, Master of Science and Specialist Degrees in the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences, please rise. On behalf of fac the faculty, I present these candidates as having fulfilled the requirements for the de designated degrees and recommend that the appropriate degrees to be conferred. Please seat it.
will the candidates for the Bachelor of Science and Master of Science degrees please rise. <laughs> On behalf of the faculty, I present these candidates as having fulfilled the requirements for the designated degrees and recommend that the appropriate degrees be conferred. Please remain standing and would all the other graduates also rise. Will the faculty and the platform party please rise? President Glenn, it is my distinct honor to present these degree candidates who are students in good standing with the University of Houston, Victoria, and have completed all the requirements for their respective degrees as set forth by the faculty of the university. I recommend that these degrees be conferred. Students, once again, I would encourage you to be present, to be in the here and now, because this is the moment you've been waiting for, a moment that represents years of work and effort on your part and the part of others. By the authority vested in me by the state of Texas and on behalf of the faculty of the Colleges of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences and Natural and Applied Sciences, I now confer upon each of you and upon those graduating in absentia your respective degrees with all rights, honors, and privileges thereunto appertaining. Ladies and gentlemen, the graduating class of the University of Houston, Victoria. Thank you, you may be seated. I just want to be sure. All right, killing it. <laughs> just a word of instruction. Graduates, in just a minute, the undergraduate marshal will, re will lead you around to this point over here, whereupon you will give your card to the reader for the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences. That will be Dr. Mark Ward, and he will call your name. And for the College of Natural and Applied Sciences, that will be Dr. Danny White. Once he calls your name, you'll come to me standing here in the middle. You do not have to shake my hand, but it helps. <laughs> Certainly make me feel better. We're gonna have a photographer right here, and we're gonna take a very nice photo suitable for framing. Family members, you're certainly welcome to take all the pictures you would like from where you are. I would remind you that after the ceremony, you can take lots of close-ups and we'd encourage you to do so. But at this point, I want to speak to the folks up there. I, it's been my experience over many years that you're excited to be here. You're anxious and looking forward to hearing your student's name called. But then some things begin to go awry, and there will be some family members who will seek to embarrass the poor graduate walking forward. They'll hoop or holler or cry out or say, you're killing it. <laughs> and do all kinds of things. So I think it's important that you hear this from the president of the university. Okay. Perfectly all right. <laughs> well, it was my turn. This is, after all, a joyous occasion, not a somber one. This is a celebration. Graduates, if you want to dance the jig as you're coming across, you go right ahead, too. This is your day. There is only one rule, particularly for those of you in the audience. You hoop it up, you holler, you make noise until the student shakes my hand and walks away, then you zip it up. 
because someone else will be waiting, and I know you don't want to shout over anyone else's moment in the spotlight. So, this is what you've been waiting for, so let's get to it. Undergraduate marshals, would you lead forward today's graduates? And it is now my privilege and my pleasure to announce the names of those receiving bachelor's degrees from the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences. Alessandra Biurazzo, magna cum laude. Charles Raviera. Kaylee Denae Rodriguez. Christine in Science, cum laude. <clears throat> Crystal Lynn Saldivar. <clears throat> Alondra Salinas, magna cum laude. Noah Heath Brandon Samples. <laughs> Ashley Nicole Schultz, summa cum laude. <laughs> Michelle Mathis Sullivan. Tamara Lynn Steele, cum laude, and a UHV employee. <laughs> Yvonne Danielle Steinbach. Michelle Lynn Sterling, summa cum laude. Krishina Luray Stewart, cum laude. Laura J. Sugawara, summa cum laude. Valerie Danielle Ledoux Smith, magna cum laude. Sarah Torres. Jessica Louise Kiku Townsend, magna cum laude and UHV employee. <laughs> Marineldi Yassel Umenzor. Michael Anthony Valdez. Adriana Isabella Vega, cum laude. Selena Skyseth 
Vidhammer, summa cum laude, an outstanding student. <laughs> Michaela in Villarreal. Zachary Clayton Walker. Sarah Lynn Weathers, cum laude. Farida Zaushi, summa cum laude. Kristen Donnell Zapata, summa cum laude. <laughs> Clive A. Lewis. <laughs> Kylie Lauren Machen. Nancy Carol Mathis. Autumn R. Means, summa cum laude. Elizabeth Yates Montez. Sunji Senjon Lalita Nana. <laughs> Isabella Corina Ochoa. <laughs> Jolene Elizabeth Orendorf. Christian Xavier Palacios, magna cum laude. Christopher Lynn Payne, magna cum laude. Cynthia Perez, cum laude. Tanya Elizabeth Perez, summa cum laude. <laughs> Valeria Alejandra Perez Padillo. <laughs> Maria Andrea Posado Fialos. Laura Catherine Pryor. Desiree Alexandra Rabino. Kayla Nicole Renard, magna cum laude. Brooklyn Page Rivera, magna cum laude. Michelle M. Ross, summa cum laude. Barbara Housley. 
Paul Cedric Haberhausen. Malia J. M. Harris. <laughs> Lenithia Chantel Haynes, summa cum laude. <laughs> Justina L. Henderson. Christy Lynn Henry, summa cum laude. Brandon Joan Horn. Naisha Denise Hudlin. Desiree in Huerta, summa cum laude. Mary H. D., cum laude. Sandra Yvonne Leos, summa cum laude. Darylin King. <laughs> Fatima Khan. <laughs> Jessica Catherine Colmus. Denisha R. Jones, cum laude. Todd Lee Jansen. Whitney Neal Hutchins. Yvette Ann Frazier. <laughs> Dominic Alexander Flores, a UHV employee. <laughs> Tierra Caitlin Figueroa, a UHV employee. Jocelyn M. Flores, summa cum laude. Eddie Kiki Flores. Brianna Kate Farquhar, cum laude. Amelia Gonzalez Espinoza. <laughs> Amber Dawn England. Johnny Wayne Damel. C. 
Sheila Grace Beninas, cum laude. Pasha Star Beltran, magna cum laude. Lavinia Denise Bailey Cotter. <laughs> Alyssa Nicole Alvarado. <laughs> Lanny D. Adair, summa cum laude. Michaela Kate, Caitlin Gibson, summa cum laude. Mary Helen Garcia, magna cum laude. Amarati Natalie Garcia. <laughs> Hallie Ann Galavan. <laughs> Amanda Molina Freibarger. Marissa Margaret Fritz, magna cum laude. <clears throat> Jacob Daniel Cuellar. <clears throat> Christina Josephine Cornish, magna cum laude. Zachary H. Cook. Jared Burton Cook, cum laude. David Cho. Adrian Lee Chavana Jr. <laughs> Melissa Mattingly Butaw, magna cum laude. <laughs> Cheyenne A. Bouchette. Gabrielle N. Boone, magna cum laude. <laughs> Marina Gabrielle Bodine. <laughs> Jennifer Lynn Bibby. Erica F. Bennett. <laughs> Mackenzie Lydia Zavala. <laughs> 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 
Crystal Dawn Miles. And it is now my privilege and my pleasure to announce the names of those receiving master's and specialist degrees from the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences, beginning with Lydia Lee Abbott. Marcy Lynn Aldred. <clears throat> Eric Jesus Alvarado. Cassandra Lachelle Boozer. <clears throat> Ilana Leslie Delbosk. Brittany Gleinser Baker, a UHV employee. <clears throat> Leslie Ileana Gonzalez. Emily Louise Hall. Ngazi Olivia Izulu. <clears throat> Monica Wayman Kitchens. Abigail Ray Mata.
Monica Sanchez. And that concludes the reading of names for graduates of the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences. My name is Danny White, and it is my privilege to announce the graduates from the College of Natural and Applied Sciences. First, bachelor's degrees, Elias Valentin Alcazar. Christella Alejos. Amanda Michelle Ament. Frederica Ampho, summa cum laude. <laughs> Christian Jewel Mengele Anjos. Daniel Ray Beaver, magna cum laude. Fiona Celine Beleo, summa cum laude. David Botero. Ariel Brianna Carmona, summa cum laude. Dalton Andrew Carter, summa cum laude. Jasmine Nicole Cassidy, cum laude. <laughs> Katie Cheyenne Castanuela. Stefan Benoit Commerson. Cameron T. Diaz. Kerry <laughs> Bernard Fagan. Delaney Constance Farrell, magna cum laude. Caitlin Marie Felix.
Peter Adrian Reyes Gachelion. Morgan Glenn. Alexis Gabriel Gomez, magna cum laude. Fabiola Hasmin Gonzalez. Prisada Muhammad Hasnain, Magna Cum Laude. Israel Palisu Kalagan, Summa Cum Laude. David F. Kaiser II. Summa cum laude. Adamole Emmanuel Kalawale, magna cum laude. Sean Gabriel Macaspect Lim, summa cum laude. <laughs> Luis Fernando Lopez Leon. <laughs> Vanessa Chin Luckenbill. Dylan Andrew Monteleski. <laughs> Jose Ricardo Ramirez, cum laude. John Paul Rodriguez. <laughs> Naomi Ruiz Cruz, summa cum laude. <laughs> Jonathan Sanchez. Trey Austin Schwartz. James Logan Stevenson III. Victoria Alexis Somerville, magna cum laude. Elias Musashi Thomas. Sydney Nudini Toomey. Yeah. 
Emily J. Perez. Lauren K. Ramon. Victoria Ashley Sefuentes. And now I would like to introduce the students receiving a master's degree from the College of Natural and Applied Science. Noemi Bustamante, outstanding student. Dagupati. <laughs> Samuel Chuku Imaka Igire. Samantha Rayan Lopez. <laughs> Alicia Anwar Merchant. Enriqueta Denise Moody. <laughs> Eva C. Wanya. Pranav Setwick Vela. <laughs> Cheng Yi Yap Diaz. And that concludes the graduates from the College of Natural and Applied Science.
Ladies and gentlemen, the graduates of the University of Houston, Victoria for 2023. I will point out that we're very fortunate to have Dr. White here with us today. He normally has his Saturday's book to announce for the Worldwide Wrestling Federation. <laughs> At this point in our ceremony, it is customary and appropriate for bachelor's recipients to move the tassel on their mortarboard from right to left to signify that they are now the recipients of a degree in higher learning. If you are wearing a UHV class ring, you also may turn your ring so that the seal faces away from you. Congratulations again to all of our degree recipients and welcome to the company of educated persons. Let's give our graduates a final round of applause. Graduates, you now join more than 23,000 alumni of the University of Houston, Victoria. We invite you to become active alumni and keep close ties to your alma mater. We want, you, we want to hear what you are doing as you continue to make your mark on the world. It is now our pleasure to induct this graduated class into the alumni of the University of Houston, Victoria. To do so, I would like to invite Robert Royer, a UHV alumnus and president and founder of Building Brands Marketing, to induct the spring 2023 graduating class. Mr. Royer earned a Bachelor of Business Administration in 2014. Dear fellow alumni of the University of Houston, Victoria, it's got a nice ring to it, huh? It's an honor to stand before you today as we celebrate the achievements of the class of 2023. You all have worked incredibly hard to earn your degree, and you've shown dedication and determination in the face of challenges and adversity. At the same time, many of you were balancing part-time or full-time jobs, or even families in some cases. I know myself how difficult that can be. But today is not just about looking back. It's also about looking forward to the future and making your mark in society. As you embark on the next chapter, chapter of your life, understand that the strength of the alumni and the university depends upon the strengths of you and us. It's time to execute and drive forward to creating your next opportunity. Always stay connected to UHV so we can make the most of our education and and ties to this wonderful university. This institution has played a significant role in shaping who you are today. And it will continue to be an important part of your life as an alumnus. Stay involved, stay engaged, and give back to the community that has given you so much and will continue to take care of those who take care of this community. In closing, I wanna congratulate each of you and every one of you on this momentous achievement today. Let's get to work, let's support each other's growth, and as fellow UHV alumni, I wanna tell y'all thank you and go Jacks. And now I would ask that everyone turn to the last page of your program and please stand for the singing of the alma mater that will be led by Brian Gibbs. You will also see the words coming onto the screen. Graduates, I will be looking to see if your lips are moving.
like to leave you with a Franciscan benediction. May God bless you with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships so that you may live deep within your heart. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people so that you may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer pain, rejection, hunger, and war, so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and turn their pain into joy. And may God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in the world so that you can do what others claim cannot be done to bring justice and kindness to all of our children and the poor. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. It takes many people to plan and organize a commencement ceremony, and in fact, the planning has been going on for some time now. We have a large number of staff who come in on the weekend in order to facilitate this event for you. I wonder if we could have a round of applause and recognition for the work that went into this program today. I also would like to thank the members of the President's Regional Advisory Board uh, who could be with us today. Let me also say to our graduates how proud we are of your accomplishments. Many of you have overcome numerous challenges to reach the day, and we salute you. Ladies and gentlemen in the audience, thank you for joining us at the commencement ceremony. We would ask that you remain seated during the recessional of the president's party and graduates. Again, Godspeed. Good luck.